Welcome everyone, good afternoon. My name is Jessica from the University Career Center. And today we have LabCorp here with us, Aaron Killian from LabCorp. Um, and so this uh, meetup is on clinical testing and the importance of certification. So I'm gonna let Aaron have the floor and Aaron, take it away. Thank you very much, Jessica. Um, so my name is Erin Killian. I have been at LabCorp for about 10 years, and originally my position was as a medical laboratory scientist. So that is what I'm going to talk to you about today and kind of go through what that means, what a day kind of looks like, and what certification means. We'll touch on some other areas, too, in the diagnostic laboratory and some of the other titles that um, might be of interest to, to you going forward. So... I will share my screen here. Come on. Oh, I did not want to share. Okay. Can you guys see the bigger side or the smaller? We see both. Okay, see if I can make it not do that. There we go. Okay. Um, so today, like I said, we're gonna talk about careers in clinical testing and what certification means. And this is just kind of our overall introductory lab core slide, just we believe in harnessing science for human good. It's one of the things that I have really enjoyed about lab core is the focus on science and what that does for our uh, patients and making patients be the focus of what we do. So the, everybody always says, well, what comes to mind when you're when you're thinking about working in a laboratory. My parents still think I'm a nurse. I try to tell them every single day that I'm a laboratory scientist, but every single time I talk to one of my mom's friends, it's, oh, you're in nursing, right? No, so we have to talk about it. So being in the laboratory is a very behind the scenes position. And so we're not often seen during COVID, we had a lot more exposure because we were doing these millions and millions of tests and the way that we were able to upscale that testing, but since then our visibility has really gone into the background. So that's again one of the reasons that I come and talk with students and really try to bring this career to the forefront. So it's a little bit about me. I kind of fell into this career as an accident. I was a Bachelor of Science in Zoology. I thought I was going to be a veterinarian and I had a really bad semester, had about a 2.3 GPA, which if you know anything about vet school, pretty much kicks you out of the running for vet school. So I took a semester off, regrouped, came back and talked with my guidance counselor, decided to do zoology, and then I graduated. And I didn't know what to do with that. I uh, kind of was doing a bunch of temporary jobs with um, field and uh, fish and wildlife services. Um, I worked in an alpaca and a llama ranch for a little while, uh, did some really cool things, but it wasn't a career and it wasn't a career that could support me financially. And one day I heard about medical lab science and it was by accident. And I was like, well, what is that? And it was working at a hospital's laboratory. And I looked more into it and saw that I needed to be certified. So I found a school that was near me and went to that school and got my, my certification. In the time that I've been a, a MLS, I have worked in hospitals as a generalist. So I've worked in all the main departments and we'll talk about those here in a little bit. I've been a hematology specialist. And then most recently I was managing our specialty coagulation laboratory, which is a really cool opportunity. And I got to do some very neat science and work with a bunch of PhDs. And we essentially in the clinical trials that we were running in our lab eradicated hemophilia A or at least the effects of hemophilia A, the patient's um, experience, and with some of those drugs that were brought to market. So today, like I said, we're gonna talk about a big group of clinical laboratory sciences. One is gonna be the medical laboratory science field, one is gonna be cytology, and one is gonna be histology. So we're gonna talk about all these areas and then what it means to be certified and what that does for you um, in your career and going forward out into the job market. 
So what is medical laboratory science? <clears throat> it's a branch of healthcare that involves laboratory testing of biological specimens to determine the presence or absence of various conditions. So we test everything, blood, urine, body fluids, tissue, bone, stool, all of these things. And we're looking to find out a diagnosis per patient or follow treatment or follow that disease state in the patient. These results are super important for patients. 70% of today's medical decisions depend on our laboratory test results. So what we do in the lab, it is super important that we are putting out timely results and that we're putting out quality results for our patients. Where do we work? Uh, we work in a lot of different areas, clinics and hospitals, reference laboratories, public health laboratories. So like when you hear about, you know, North Carolina public health, um, a lot of times those are going to be medical laboratory science that are scientists that are working there. Forensic laboratories, fertility clinics, a lot of embryologists are medical laboratory scientists. And then pharmaceutical companies, a lot of pharm pharma companies use us to determine safety and efficacy of different drugs. This is a little snapshot of our lab in, uh, in Raritan, New Jersey. So this is our uh, Sysmex line you can see here. And that lab is a 281,000 square foot lab. We employ about 4,500 employees. 600 of those are lab personnel, including 18 MDs and PhDs. We see over 100,000 patients per day in that lab. And I wish I had some time, some extra time. I was traveling this week, but um, we do have one of the largest laboratories. Actually, it is the largest laboratory under one roof in Burlington, North Carolina. Um, I don't have the specifics of that lab. I was going to try and pull them before this, but unfortunately I didn't get to that. Uh, but it is one of the most premier laboratories. It has a center of esoteric testing. Um, so we do some of the most complex testing of all of our facilities in that laboratory. It's a very, very neat facility. So this is just some pictures of different parts of our facilities across um, the company. We are nationwide. Um, and this just kind of shows you what little snapshot of the day. And on this slide, I kind of want to talk about a little bit the stable job field. Uh, so a lot of people ask me, well, what does medical laboratory science look like in terms of where I'm going to get to in the future? So the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics says that we have an 11% job growth over the next 10 years. And if you look at typical job growth, that's anywhere from about 3 to 5%. So we are almost double the average job growth in the United States. Additionally, if you see like, let me put a little pointer here. Uh, these areas here, this room here. And you can see a little bit on this side as well. This is all brand new cutting edge technology in our, in our facilities. These are brand new lines that are not in any other lab in, in the world. So we do offer that really cutting edge technology in this career field that you get to work with these really neat, you know, million dollar analyzers to test these samples. Um, and you get to work in really top of the line, you know, laboratories. Additionally, in terms of like scheduling, um, laboratories are 24 seven. So they're open to a lot of schedule, like flexibility in scheduling. So you might be on 312s, 410s. Um, some people who are night owl owls really like the overnights. Some people do seven on, seven off. Um, they're really flexible in terms of life work balance areas. So in this slide, we kind of talk about some of those areas that we will train people in or get trained in as a medical laboratory science scientist. Um, the big ones are going to be hematology. So this is where we're going to look at your blood and we're going to see how many red blood cells you have, how many white blood cells you have, what different kinds of them are in your blood and what those mean. In this area, we also typically do some body fluid analysis. So we're going to be looking at, say you have a pleural effusion, meaning that you are collecting fluid in your um, lung area. So we're going to look at that and see if there's any cancerous cells, if they're what those cells types are there that are present. Um, we also do coagulation in hematology. So we're going to look at your clotting and your bleeding and make sure that you're in that very fine balance that we're all in as we walk around every day. Another big area is going to be blood bank. 
uh, this is our transfusion service area. So we're gonna test your blood and we're gonna make sure that we know what blood type you are. And then we're gonna make sure that we are giving you the safest product that we can. And that might be a packed red blood cell, plasma, platelets, all of the above. Um, this could be due to anemia uh, up all the way up into very uh, trauma events like a gunshot wound or a stabbing. And those are very emergent events and we have uh, policies in place to deal with those as well. Another big area is gonna be chemistry. So common tests that you hear out in the world is gonna be something like a basic metabolic panel or a comprehensive metabolic panel. So a BMP or a CMP, you hear, you'll hear on TV shows all the time. So what those are measuring is those are measuring different electrolytes and different analytes in your blood, like potassium and glucose and sodium. And we're gonna look at all those and know what those mean and track those in the patient to kind of get a baseline of health. We also have a lot of special areas in chemistry. Uh, this is for more complex and less frequent testing. One of my favorite things I ever did in chemistry was I did um, drugs of rejection. So we had a huge transplant area in one of the level one trauma centers I worked in. And we did drugs of rejection um, testing to see what their levels were. And it was an extremely complex test. And it was a lot, of, to me, it was a lot of fun. It was very sciencey, very hands-on, pipettes, beakers, what you think of in a lab, so. And then last is gonna be microbiology. Now this is where we identify pathogenic bacteria and we're gonna be looking at this from maybe in your blood, um, when you go to the doctor's office and you have your throat swabbed, this is where those swabs go to. Um, so we're gonna be identifying what microbes are causing your illness. And additionally in microbiology, one of the things that's emerging is molecular methods. So we are now looking at using different antigen and antibody um, ID to uh, get that down to a molecular. So we're not having to wait for the pathogen to grow, but we're actually looking at little snippets of that antigen at the DNA level and being able to identify the, them that way and much quicker too. So instead of having a 48 hour plate growth, this is being done in like four to six hours. Some other specialty departments that we have, uh, we have reverse transcription PCR and NAT testing. So nucle nucleic acid app amplification testing. So this was really big in COVID-19, right? So this is where we shined. We were able to bring up brand new, never before used testing um, and we're able to test millions of Americans and across the United States using NAT testing. Um, so like I said, growing in ex exponentially with new technology and diseases. So COVID-19 is one of the biggest examples of that. We also do a lot of special chemistry. So toxicology, if you, uh, you know, have seen or been around somebody who has a DUI, unfortunately, you know, then their blood is going to go to a toxicologist and we are going to measure the level of blood alcohol um, in that patient. And there's a whole chain of custody that goes along with that as well protein and hemoglobin electrophoresis. So we are gonna run your sample across a gel to kind of look at the different components in the blood and be able to tell if you have an abnormal hemoglobin or abnormal proteins present. HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography is also one of our specialties. And then endocrinology testing is done in, in usually very specialized labs. So what makes a good medical laboratory scientist candidate? First of all, is a passion for science and helping others. So if you are in your programs right now and you are really good at your laboratories, like the hands-on section, I was super good at organic chemistry, terrible in the lecture, very, very good in the laboratory. Same thing with biochemistry. You know, I actually was pretty good at the lecture in that, but I was good at both sides of that one. Um, but I always kind of gravitated towards the lab sections. So these hands-on were, it kind of clicked for me the theory I was learning in class versus the laboratory. And I had that passion for science. Um, and then the little other part of that is helping others too. So I thought maybe for a while I wanted to be a nurse. And I just, I could not put myself in a place to be that close to somebody and be in their personal space like that. That's just not my personality or where I'm comfortable, but I still wanted to give back and help others. So this was a great way that I could do that behind the scenes and really leverage some of my, um, my talents. 
able to communicate clearly. Uh, we are a part of a healthcare team. So we're communicating to physicians every day. We're communicating to nurses and with each other. You know, we need to be able to communicate as a team in the lab and be able to be clear about what we mean, where, where we are in a testing process and pass that on to somebody. Or when we communicate with nursing staff, if we have to reject samples or, you know, what a diagnosis or what a test result means to those outside of the laboratory. You a lot of times do a lot of education, especially with residents and new doctors. Um, we're constantly working with them to train them and to share what we know and what we do as a profession. Strong organizational and time management skills. Uh, we are multitaskers. So usually you're not just standing at one an analyzer all day testing. You will often be doing one analyzer. Amazon's here. So my dogs might be barking in the background. I don't know if you can hear them. Um, <laughs> so you do have to have that kind of time management skills of being able to run multiple analyzers and, and different tests at one time. Has a curiosity for innovation. Talked a little bit about this in one of the slides of new technology that we get in labs. Really having that curiosity for what's coming next. Um, I have attended some of the best, you know, new analyzer trainings or we have to do continuing ed. So every year I have to do 12 credits of continuing ed and I love continuing ed because it keeps me, you know, knowing the next new thing. So having this curiosity for what's coming next how we identify new bacteria, how we have these new molecular methods. So I really have enjoyed that part of the career field is that continuing to educate yourself and be a part of that, that uh, process. And then just wanting to be a part of the healthcare team. Um, like I said, I didn't wanna be a nurse, but I did really like the helping others portion of being a medical laboratory scientist. So this talks a little bit about educational pathways. Uh, there are two different pathways. One is a medical laboratory technician that is an associate's level, so two year degree. And these work under the supervision of a medical laboratory scientist. And then the other one is the medical laboratory scientist. This is gonna be the bachelor's level degree. Um, this is also synonymous with a medical technologist and a clinical laboratory scientist. You'll hear those terminology used interchangeably. And so they, we have as a degree field decided that we want to be a medical laboratory scientist. So that is what we are referred to now. In the bachelor's degree, there's two different ways to get that. One would be to be in a medical laboratory science degree. So you would do three years of your, you know, gen ed and science classes. And then your last year would be your MLS. And then the other way is like me, where I graduated with a zoology degree, and then I did my one year of training. So I went to a program and I did theory in blood bank, micro, um, hematology, chemistry, did all that theory, and then did clinical rotations with them. For both of these, they do require that you um, do your certification exam. So we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But you do, after these programs, you're eligible to sit for a certification. You sit for that certification, and then you are certified. So I am a certified MLS. Some of the other additional lab science technical and technical career roles. One is a pathologist. Um, so a lot of people who go into you know, being a doctor do end up in pathology. It's one of the harder areas to get into. It's one of the highest levels of residency. So you, it's a lot more training than some of the other um, routes like a surgeon, uh, but they do oversee our laboratory. So they are the ones who hold like the, um, the certification for the lab. So they are the ones who sign off on everything, uh, make sure that we are doing uh, testing per their direction. Uh, pathology assistant is another uh, way to go. That is a master's level degree. And there are only about seven or eight schools in the United States for, for PA school. And it is a very competitive program. Um, you do come out as a PA in your first year of making about 300K. So it is a, a really good investment um, it, for a master's level program, uh, but it is there, it's very competitive and there's not that many programs for it. 
And then the other two that we're going to talk about here on the left are a histotechnologist, uh, which look under microscope to detect tissue abnormalities for disease diagnosis and the treatment of disease. And then a cytotechnologist. And a cytotechnologist is going to specialize in finding and diagnosing cancer cells under the mi microscope. So these texts are really super specialized to look at um, cells to determine malignancy versus benign. And again, like in the MLS that we were just talking about, we have an MLT, the technician level, and then the technologist level. And that's the same here in histology. So we have, have a histotechnician, and then we have a histotechnologist. So the difference in these two is one, the technician is needs a minimum of a two-year degree, just like the MLT. And then a histotechnologist also needs to have the bachelor's, just like the MLS. So what these guys are going to do, we'll go ahead and go to the slide. So these are the five areas of histology. So first they're gonna gross and fix that tissue. So where they're gonna receive a tissue from say a surgery and or potentially an autopsy and they are going to trim and cut that tissue to find the area that they need for that diagnosis. So this, this is where their training comes in is they're gonna know exactly where they need to cut to get the best margins to show the pathologist exactly where in that tissue sample that they need to be looking. They're gonna embed this piece of tissue. They're gonna put this in wax um, and it's gonna be kind of like a big paraffin wax. And during that process down here in the processing, all the water is gonna be removed from that tissue and it's gonna be re replaced by that paraffin wax. And so that's gonna support this tissue as they do the next part, which is sectioning. And they're gonna cut this very, very thin I, this is like almost down to a single cell thin. It's on an instrument called a microtome. And then at the very last, there's going to be a staining component. So they will have different panels of staining that are going to go through and stain these tissues in different ways that they can look for different diagnosis of um, disease in the patient. So here on the left, we have embedding so that... Um, Oh, sorry, excuse me, on the right, <laughs> they're embedding and on the left, they are sectioning. So the, on the left, that is a microtome. It's kind of looking down through the, uh, the safety shield. And then on the uh, right here is the embedding of the tissue in that paraffin. So that wax is still uh, liquid there, that little heat block that they're on and they're moving that tissue in there to um, make sure that that is in the right spot. So cytotechnologists is the other area that we're gonna talk about. And these are gonna be our professionals who study cells and cellular abnormalities. Typically this is done by looking at specimens under on glass slides under a microscope. Uh, more and more we are moving towards a digital age. So these slides are now being put into a digital format and they're no longer just sitting at a microscope looking at what we call glass all day long. So that's kind of the, slang term, if you want to call it. Um, so we no longer just look at glass all day. We do look at this, the cells on a computer screen and we use that more and more, um, and especially in screening, because we're able to screen a lot faster. You know, you have a lot more cells per field on a computer screen than you do in an objective on a microscope. Uh, these, just like other professions in the laboratory sciences, we, they play a crucial role in helping patients recover from illness by identifying disease while it's still at a treatable stage. And to become a cytologist, there's two different routes. Um, this is slowly changing. Next year, the uh, requirements for a cytologist will be only a master's degree level. Um, that is a change in their professional organization, um, the CAHEP, that C -E or C-A-A-H-E-P accredited programs. They have all decided that they are going to move to master's level. So right now you can still apply and get into a bachelor of science program, but you do need to, the programs are going to be moving into a master's program. So right here, this very first one, I wanted to point out this University of Nebraska um, Medical Center. This is an online program and here in Burlington and in North Carolina, we work with them a lot. Uh, they do the whole online didactic portion. So all the theory, and then they come to us here in North Carolina and we do the on-site training. So we do all of their slide work, um, what's called their capstone project, which is kind of their rotationals. 
here in North Carolina with them. So that's a pretty strong partnership that we have that's been um, a great one for us. So cytologists uh, at work um, are the very first line of defense for many types of cancer screening. So we're all on the lookout for cancer cells. Cytotechnologists also come across other infectious agents or processes like fungal uh, infections. So often we'll see the different fungal elements on our computer screen or glass. Uh, bacteria, CMV, which is cytol cytolomegalovirus, uh, which is a disease that we look for a lot for uh, rejection of different drugs or when we're trying to cross match different units of product. And I just wanted to point out here in this picture, this gentleman here is um, on a computer screen looking at a lot of those cells. I wish I had a better picture of that computer screen. This is the best one I could find. <laughs> so every single one of these little rolls, rows is um, different cells that he is looking at and evaluating. So while you're still in school, some of the areas that you can work at in a lab that if you want to kind of get your feet wet, kind of see if this is something that you like. Uh, we have phlebotomist uh, positions that do not require an advanced degree. So that's where you're drawing patients. We have specimen assessioners. So these are in the lab that are going to be bringing in those samples that came from the phlebotomist and getting them to the right departments for testing. Lab assistants are gonna be ones that help us prep um, a lot of times reagents. Uh, sometimes they're helping us load instruments, uh, getting samples, all these kinds of supportive tasks. And then a customer service support re re representative, which is where we uh, have you speaking with our customers. If we have a problem with an assay or a problem with a specimen that was submitted to us, our CSSRs will call the clinic and, and speak with them directly and make sure that we are doing the best thing for the patient, either recollecting that or uh, moving forward with the testing if the doctor wishes. So let's talk a little bit about certification. So of the three jobs that we talked about, MLS, histology, and cytology, Cytology is the only one that you must be certified. You cannot walk into a lab and say, I want to be a cytologist and get trained on the job training. Now, the other two positions, a medical laboratory scientist and a histologist, both can come into the lab and not be certified. You can do on-the-job training with them, with the laboratory. At LabCorp, we do hire in Bachelor of Science degree students, and we have them come in with us as a title that we call techno trainee, kind of a holdover from that technologist title we talked about. And we have them come in as a techno trainee. You train with us for a year and then we promote you in as a technologist. That does not mean you're certified, just means within our company, we recognize that one year of service with us and under different federal regulations, we can call you a technologist and have you at that level. So what is the advantage to, to doing on the job training versus going into a certification. So for both histology and the medical laboratory science field, first, higher starting salaries. You will make almost 20K higher a year coming in as a certified in, in either a histology um, or a medical laboratory scientist. It's, it's a significant amount for one year of work. So you're already gonna start out at a much higher pay rate than coming in and getting your on-the-job training. Faster job growth potential. Uh, so there is always a higher potential for promotion when you're already certified. There are different, again, federal regulations that are around laboratory work that say you either have to be certified or you have to have X number of years of service before you can be considered for positions like a supervisor or a manager. A technical supervisor, I believe it is four years by our College of, Amer of American Pathologists regulations. And if you were to live in the state of New York, that's actually six years for a supervisor that you'd have to work before you'd even be considered for a promotion. Um, so this is just gives you a lot faster promotion. And again, back into salaries, get you into a higher salary quicker. Job portability. Uh, this is a big one, I think. I. 
I always, I, this is something I always talk about with people when we're talking, if they want to be a bachelor's or if they want to go get certified, I can go into any hospital anywhere in the United States and be hired. Um, that is not true. If you only have a bachelor's degree, uh, you would have to work and you'd have to go, go find a reference laboratory or biotech or biopharma, um, to work in. I can go into any single hospital and right now I pretty much guarantee that there's going to be a position that I could walk into. Um, so this gives you that portability of being able to move across the country um, to have, you know, wherever you want to go. You are living in North Carolina right now. You want to go move to Colorado and learn how to snowboard? Go for it. Uh, I have a friend who works in Vail as, a, as an MLS. So he works right at the base of the mountain. He gets to go snowboarding all day and he loves it. So it, it's all, you know, kind of lets you control what you want to do in your career. Oops. One of the other things that I think certification really does for people, I talked a little bit about having those continuing ed credits. The other part of this is that being part of professional organizations and being involved in those. So tomorrow I'm going to be presenting at the North Carolina um, Spring Symposium for the Clinical Laboratory Sciences. Um, I really enjoy not only meeting other MLSs, but also being able to talk shop in what I do all day. I think what we do is really interesting. I like the new, like I was saying, new technology, new stuff that comes out, new, you know, disease states. We're having, a, you know, malaria is now in the United States. So, you know, all these new things that are kind of coming out that we haven't dealt with before, you get to talk about these things in professional organizations and it's a great networking. So again, back to job portability, these organizations, they're so wonderful because, you know, when you want to move and you want to do things, you already have that networking, that connection already built in. And the last is independent work. Um, yes, we work as part of a team, but as a certified person, I get to come in and I get to work pretty independently. I am under a pathologist, like I said earlier, but I don't have to be supervised in every, anything I do. My certification says that I can medically validate testing and send it out to a, a doctor. If I had a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree, all my work would have to be reviewed or it'd have to be supervised in direct line of sight by somebody who is certified. So it just gives you a little bit more independence, which I, I enjoy. <laughs> um, so why LabCorp? Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we have, what we uh, do for benefits. I am going to skip this video because when I did it earlier, it was glitching. So I do not want to try that today. Um, so we are a Fortune 300 company. We have extensive combined capabilities across diagnostics and drug development. So I did not uh, talk about really the drug development branch of us um, very much. So I'm going to give you a little spiel here on what drug development means for us. So the bread and butter of what we do at LabCorp is diagnostic testing. Everything that we just talked about, the cytology, the laboratory science, and the big clinical areas, and the histology. We do have another branch of our company that does drug development. So we work with big pharmaceutical companies to bring drugs to market. So we work in animal modeling, and then we also work in uh, clinical trials, so different phases of clinical trials to bring drugs to market. And we do that through phase one, two, three, and four. So we're ensuring that these drugs are safe and effective for them to be released to um, the public. We have about 72,000 employees globally. So we're not just the United States. We do have laboratories in Shanghai, China, in India, um, the UK, we have a huge footprint in uh, Geneva, we have a lot of areas that we we also have other laboratories and, and partnerships with other laboratories in um, the global market as well, uh, about 100 different countries. We have over 50 years of experience. So we started in Burlington, North Carolina. That is where our headquarters is. Um, and we have been there for, like I said, 50 years. And you'll see on the next map, um, kind of the, our focus has been there and we're slowly going west. We have about 5,000 clinical laboratory tests, and each year we launch about an additional 100 tests. And some of those are ones that we've worked with pharmaceutical companies to develop, 
to monitor their drugs. So in my laboratory, we had, in my coagulation laboratory, we had designed with a uh, pharmaceutical maker, a assay to measure their level of drugs specifically. That was then launched out to the public so that doctors who were prescribing that drug now can now order that test from us and see the exact level of that drug in their patient. So we do launch about a hundred of new assays every year. Um, we have patient data on about 50% of the U.S. population. Uh, you know, we do over 3 million patient encounters each week. So that means, you know, 3 million different patients we're testing. So that ends up with a lot of data. So we do a lot of data analytics in the background as well. <laughs> um, we collaborated on 80 new drugs uh, in 2022. I do not have that new by or that new statistic for 2023 yet um we'll see where where we came out in 2023 though and then we had um, 180 companion diagnostic projects in 2020. so this is the map i was talking about and you can see over here on the west or on the east coast excuse me how concentrated we really are we are slowly moving west and i i shouldn't say slowly because i feel like every day i'm hearing of a new lab opening, or we acquired a new pathology lab, um, especially up in Seattle, and now through uh, Arizona and Utah, we uh, have a lot stronger props, um, presence. So across the US, we have over uh, 2,000 uh, patient service centers. That's the, where our phlebotomists are that collect our samples. We have specialty labs that are indicated on this map by some of those orange dots. Uh, that do specialty testing in oncology coagulation. So my lab was one of the little orange dots there in Colorado. Uh, endocrinology and other uh, esoteric testing like toxicology. We have over 3,000 couriers who make over 8,000 stops a day. And this also includes our own aviation team that fly, that LabCorp owns. We have a hangar in Burlington, North Carolina and we fly planes every single night around um, the East Coast to bring specimens to our Raritan lab, our Birmingham lab, and our Burlington lab. So we are flying samples around ourselves. We don't rely on Delta or Southwest here on the East Coast for that. Um, we do that ourselves. That program is expanding to the West in the next two years. So we're very excited for that. Um, and then we are the largest commercial genetic counseling uh, provider. So we work with a lot of different, um, uh, both on the education side, teaching people genetic counseling, and then also providing that out to providers as well, that education piece. So as an employer, um, we have been recognized globally. Uh, in 2022, we are America's most responsible companies by News Newsweek. 21, we are Fast Company's most innovative company. And in 21 and 22, we were the world's most admired companies for Fortune magazine. So we are well recognized around the globe for what we do for our employees. Um, as an employee, you can expect competitive hourly pay healthcare benefits. We have great medical, dental, and vision. Our medical is on several different levels. Um, we have financial benefits, which includes a 401k with match. Um, training and development, I think, is a big piece that I don't hear myself as a recruiter and other recruiters talk about en enough. We have tuition reimbursement, and we also partner with some of the largest um, universities in the United States for online education. So we actually pay the tuition up front. So you've completed your bachelor's degree. Now you're with us and you want to go back to get a master's degree. We partner with them that you can get that paid up front up to $5,000 a year. It's $5,250 actually specifically. <laughs> um, we also have mentorship programs and these are mentorship um, both up and reverse. So uh, we mentor our people above us, and then we also get mentorship from them as well, from them giving us guidance for our growth. And then we also do kind of a reverse where we give them ideas and things that we can see at another level. So it's always this kind of uh, combined effort and wheel of kind of ideas, which I really, I've been a part of a couple different of our mentorships, and they've been great. 
And the last is our employee assistance programs. Um, we have mental health and wellness support. So both of those are really well recognized in our company. And one of my favorites is the fitness reimbursement program. Every year we get $300 for any kind of fitness you want. So I used to do a lot of the mud runs, like the Tough Mudder and those, and LabCorp used to pay for all of my registrations for those, which was phenomenal. We believe in diverse backgrounds and experiences are crucial to our success. And one of the things that LabCorp really has put uh, a lot of effort into is what we call our employee resource groups. So these focus on different diverse um, areas. We have Pride, which is featured here, which is a LGBTQ uh, group that all of, we have different chapters of across the whole country. We have a Women's em Empowerment Network. We have Ascend for Young Professionals. So these are just areas where you can come um, get networking experience. Um, our WEN group here in North Carolina last Tuesday, a week ago Tuesday, was out doing um, how, uh, Habitat for Humanity house building. Um, we also have done a lot with uh, the Pulse group in terms of providing food for the homeless. Uh, we did a whole packing up different uh, box lunches for homeless. Uh, so we've done a lot of that. I personally am a part of WEN and, and Pride here. So I've loved that I've gotten great volunteer organization out of this and also just getting to meet people across the company. When you're 70,000 employees, it's interesting to get to meet new people. So I, when my Pride group meets with another Pride group, I get to exposure to a whole new group of people. And last, uh, well, this kind of goes back to some of that, uh, helping people reach the next level in their careers. We do the 100% tuition coverage. Um, so this is gonna be a little bit outside of what you guys are since you're already in your bachelor's level, but these are gonna be for all of our undergraduate healthcare and life science certificates and degree programs. This is part of our, that LabCorp education advantage that I was talking about, um, that we're able to get people into those programs. This is the reverse and diverse mentoring. So we foster an environment of continuous learning and inclusivity um, where we have executives are mentored by juniors. And then we also have the diverse backgrounds and perspectives. And then we just have unique career paths across many, many fields. Um, I've seen, I love this one, um, from phlebotomy to computer science. I had a phlebotomist that was working under me um, as a manager in Colorado and they went back and they got their computer science and so they were actually came into my lab and were writing Python code for me to be able to have a new way to track my inventory. Um, so an incredible story. And I really, it, it was a great program for that person. And they were just amazing. Not, not something I could do. I have no idea about Python. Um, so just really great ways that we help people reach what they want to do. Uh, kind of just a little bit more about we help people live their healthiest lives. Again, we have really competitive time off. Um, salaried employees, we have flexible time off. So I don't, as a salaried employee, I don't have like a PTO bank. I have flexible time off. All of our blood testing for our employees is at no charge. We have a comprehensive wellness program and then the $300 annual fitness reimbursement that I just talked about. So that is all I have for you. So. Um, open it up for question and answer if you guys have any questions about anything that we went over about LabCorp in general. I actually do. Uh, so you said the certification is uh, far more important to actually get uh, to higher up into the into the ladder. Mm -hmm. um, how would you get the how would you like what is my door like how can I get in to get a good certificate like in whichever field that I want to go to? Sure, so there are programs across the United States. Um, so the easiest way to find one, so if you wanted to do medical laboratory science, our accrediting body is called NACLS, um, the National Agency for Accrediting Clinical Laboratory Science. Um, and you just go onto the NACLS website, NACLS.org, and say, find a program. It'll list all the histology programs and all the MLS programs for you. And they're usually about a, a year long. Some of them are nine months. Nine months to a year is usually to what to expect to be in one of those programs. Programs are anywhere from no tuition 
up to about $22,000 for that year program. Um, LabCorp manages two programs, one in Jacksonville, Florida, and one in Michigan. And then we are also in the process of bringing up our own program internally. So that program will be um, in Birmingham, Phoenix, and uh, Indiana initially. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Aaron, in one of your previous slides, you mentioned that it's hourly pay, but then just the slide you had was hourly and salaried. Yes. Are most of the bachelor positions hourly? And then most of the masters and other management supervisory positions, salary? Yeah. So when you come into the lab as a medical laboratory scientist, you will be hourly. Um, and then as you move up that ladder, you do become salaried. So usually it's at the supervisor level that you do become a salaried employee. Okay. And speaking of salary, I think I heard you right. You mentioned about the PA positions, pathology assistants that they start at 300,000 a year, but there's not many programs. I guess the pathologist is higher than the pathology assistant. Yeah, and I don't know what a pathologist starts at, and that's kind of a hard number to come across because a lot of times they are consultants. Um, so that brings a whole other level of how you figure out their pay. Um, yeah. And they often will also be consulting at same multiple hospital systems. Um, so I worked with a pathology group in Colorado that oversaw two different hospital system laboratories. Um, so they were consult considered consultants at both laboratories. I drive up and down to Raleigh in that area. I always see the LabCorp facilities up I-85, and I didn't realize that was the headquarters. And what a huge facility. Yes. And what career opportunities and all types of majors. So... A lot yeah, of opportunities. Especially here in North Carolina, there really is the opportunities for all sorts of majors. You know, we have, you know, this being our headquarters area, um, this is where our HR is. This is where sourcing and procurement is. So supply chain management, you know, all of these kind of big majors, this is kind of the hot spot for it. I was sharing with Jessica earlier that we come to the uh, fall career fair often, um, but usually it's for business. Uh, because we are looking for master's level business for our corporate area here for our corporate position. So, and you even hire pilots for the planes. Amazing. We do. <laughs> we have a whole aviation team and they, they are pilots. And I actually got the opportunity uh, two months ago to go out to the hangar and got to meet all the pilots and see what they do. And it, it's awesome. Amazing. I do yeah. have one more question with all that you do. I would think certainly safety is a big concern for your employees and everything they do. Could you speak on that a little bit? Sure. Um, so being in the laboratory does come with inherent risks. You are working with biological specimens. And so you do treat everything that you touch as a biosafety risk um, that is bio, biohazardous. Uh, so LabCorp in particular is probably one of the places I, most well, definitely one of the places I have worked that really takes that safety very, very seriously um, that we are provided every day uh, with lab coats, gloves, and we all wear face shields. So anytime you have any sort of splash risk with a biohazardous sample, you are going to be required to have a face shield on. You don't want to get anything in your mucous membranes um, and be able to contract anything, you know, HIV, HBV, um, uh, HCV, all the hepatitises, you know, you want to be very, very careful of those. So we do a lot of training up front um, before you're even allowed to go into the lab, even as somebody who's been in the lab now for almost 20 years. If I walked into LabCorp as a brand new employee today, I'd still go through the same uh, safety training as somebody who's never been in a lab or as somebody coming straight in with their bachelor's degree. We do a bloodborne pathogen training. We do a, what we call personal protective equipment training, PPE training. Um, we're going to take you on a tour of all of our safety areas. We have showers in all of our laboratories. So if you got anything on you, um, for whatever reason, was enough for you to need a shower. We have those. We have eye wash stations. And then additionally, we also have scrubs that we keep on site just in case you got anything like, pant, like below on your pant leg. 
that falls outside your lab coat, we have the ability to, you know, get you changed into something new. And then we have additional resources um, that we can send you for um, like tighter testing and safety if you do have an exposure. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other questions, students? Okay, well, if there's not any, um, Aaron, is it okay? I always ask this, is it okay if students find you on LinkedIn and possibly connect? Okay, so you can find Aaron on LinkedIn and connect with her there if you have any other questions that may come up later. Um, but I wanted to thank Aaron uh, for giving such a great overview of all the things at LabCorp. Um, it's such a big company with so many um, opportunities. And um, so we really thank you for taking your time today and sharing these things with our students. Um, we'll have this recording up on our YouTube channel. So if you wanted to share this with anyone or watch it again, it'll be available. Um, and um, Aaron, I wanted to ask if you would be able to share your slides with us so we can provide that as a resource for students. Yes, absolutely. Okay, awesome. Great. So we'll have that available too. So thank you so much, everyone. And thank you, Erin, for today. And um, I hope everyone has a great day. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.